Hello, my name is Dr. Homer Ferguson, and I am the organist choir master here at Emmanuel Episcopal Church in beautiful Southern Pines, North Carolina. Today, we are going to explore the organ console of the C.B. Fisk Opus 145 pipe organ. In this video, we will learn about all of the mechanics that operate our pipe organ. Specifically, we are going to spend some time looking at all of the different tools that we have available to make the instrument do what it is that an organist does. In the next few weeks, we will then explore other aspects of the instrument, looking at different families of organ tone, going inside the organ and exploring the different divisions. And finally, we will bring that to a close with a video that will bring together all of the various parts so you'll be able to see how the organ functions in totality. So what you have here is essentially the cockpit. This is not the instrument, so to speak. The instrument is over here. And you can see the beautiful facade pipes and everything behind there is what the instrument really is. The wind system and the pipes. What the console does is that it connects the wind system and the pipes together so that you can play the various sounds of the organ. So what are all of these knobs that we see here? Well, first, let's look at the organization of the console. As you can see, the organ console has three keyboards. We have a great manual, the lower keyboard, and we have an upper manual, which is what we call the swell keyboard. We also have another keyboard, which is down here, which is the pedal board. The pedal board is just like the upper keyboards in that we have what we call white keys and black keys. They're just longer as you play the pedal board with your feet. However, low C, for example, is the same as low C in the pedal board. So let me demonstrate. If I play low C here, I can play the same low C with the pedal board by coupling from here to the pedal board. The keyboards on this particular instrument are 61 notes in the manuals. So from C to C, we have one, two, three, four, five octaves. And in the pedal board, we have 32 notes from C all the way up to G. We call this, this is middle G, if you will, which is the top note. All of these buttons and all of these knobs have their own functions. Everything that is part of the great division of the organ is controlled through the stops on the right hand side of the console. So everything that you see here that I'm pulling on is played here or lives in the great division. So for example, the eight foot open diapason is part of the great division. If I were to pull this stop on and try and play here, it wouldn't operate. Now everything that is part of the swell division those stops, those controls are all here on 
the, uh, above this well manual. So here's the eight foot violin diapason. And that is controlled here on the swell keyboard. Now you can do something else. You can take the, the, the sounds, the pipes, the stops that are on this keyboard and bring them down here. So for example, but there's nothing here right now because the stops here are all turned off. If I couple, which is bringing one thing and attaching it to something else, what we call the swell to the grate, then I can have the same sound here and here. It's kind of like cooking. So maybe I have an ingredient here on the grate, and I have an ingredient here on the swell, we'll say they're different kinds of chocolate, and I want to combine them, now both are playing. The stops over here are part of the pedal division, and these controls, these knobs, operate the sounds that I play with the pedal board, with my feet. Not here or here, but just with the pedal. So on this instrument, there are three divisions. We've seen the pedal division, the swell division, and the great division. Now, I've turned some sounds on on the instrument without totally explaining to you what these things are. These knobs are what we refer to as stops. A stop, in essence, is a sound on the organ, if you want to call it a, a tone on the organ, an instrument on the organ. There are all kinds, and we will discuss the families of organ tone in another video. But just for now, you'll note that this is the eight foot chimney flute. This has its own control knob. I can turn that off, turn on another one. This is the eight foot violin diapason and get something else, turn that off, turn something else on, and get something else, etc., etc. I can combine things, etc. So the stops can be thought of as ingredients, if you will, in creating different organ tone. They can be thought of as a palette that an artist has in creating different colors. They can be thought of as individual instruments like in an orchestra, and we combine them in different ways depending on what the musical texture calls for. You'll notice these other buttons here. These are what we call pistons. The pistons of the organ allow us to create a registration, all right, some sort of palette of musical color that we can later call upon. So say I want that sound. I can 
have the organ memorize this combination of pipes. So I do that by pushing the set button over here, and then I push what we call a preset, number one, I'm going to use number one, and now it's memorized. I'm going to hit the cancel button which turns everything off, and now nothing, but I want to make a quick change. There are 12 pistons that are called general pistons. And these 12, one through six here between the swell and grate manual, and seven through 12, which is underneath the grate manual, control every stop on the organ. And so all of these combinations, all of these buttons control everything. It can make for fast changes. I have no idea what I have on this memory level, but let's just, let's have fun with it for just a minute. So here's one, two, three, four, five, So different sounds and combinations for different musical needs. There are also preset buttons here all this kind of whole system, the combination action. These pistons, one through eight, control just the swell division stops. Likewise, there's a set here that controls just the great division stops. The pedal has its own, what we call divisional pistons. They're down here, one through four. We also have a duplication of these general pistons in the pedal board with toe studs. So they are literally mechanical pistons that you push with your toe. There are also a few other things on the console that are of interest. We have pistons that are specific. This one is the swell to grate piston. So it brings this manual onto this manual and it has its own dedicated button so that you can do that at will. Same for the pedal division. Uh, the, the, the manual couplers to the pedal. We have the swell to pedal, on and off. They're what we call reversible, so when you push them once, they turn on. Push them again, they turn off, back and forth. Great to pedal. We also have duplication of those with toe studs. Great to pedal, swell to pedal, and two programmable reversibles. This is currently programmed to operate the swell to grate. This is currently programmed to operate the 32 foot resultant such that when I use it, it turns this specific stop on. I can program these reversibles to do anything I want, but this is a useful stop to be able to reach. And we have a few other items on here. We have kind of their little up carrot and down carrot, which is a control for the various memory levels on the organ. So this particular organ has 300 memory levels. And each memory level is essentially uh, a canvas that all of these buttons work on. So right now I'm on memory level 7. So piston 1 on memory level 7 does this. So that gives me 12 generals. But I'm going to move down to piston, excuse, memory level 6. In doing so, now piston 1 is this. Memory 
level seven. Memory level six. And so what that does is that gives you a huge ability to prepare the instrument for all kinds of music and repertoire for various organists who are going to sit here uh, and need control of the instrument. So with 300 memory levels, 300 times 12 general pistons, we have a whole lot of combinations that are available for us to program and use. This can be very, very useful in service playing in that we can often uh, say we're preparing a choral accompaniment. Um, I would, you know, maybe it's a Mendelssohn piece. Um, and there's a lot of, of nuances that are required, a lot of different changes. It can take, you know, four, four hours to register the piece, something like that. And having this amount of memory allows us to store that in a way that I don't have to go back and spend four hours registering the organ when we go to offer that musical piece with the choir again. One of the devices that we haven't spoken about is the sequencer. And what the sequencer does is that it allows me to start at one and using the same button, it's a plus, there's several of them. There's one here, there's one here, there's one down here on a toe stud. There's also uh, one here on the, um, on the organ. Let's see where it is. I have to find it. Ah, oh, here it is. It's, one on, it's under here. If you have a page turner, for example, and you don't want them getting in the way, you can do it here. It switches. <laughs> oh, I lost it. There it is. There. And it's right here on the edge. And I can go forwards and backwards. There's a similar one over here. So depending on which side of the key desk you have your page turner. Very handy. But what the sequencer does is that it allows you to go through the pistons in order and set up very complicated registrations. So here's two. I'm just hitting the same button and I'm cruising through the combinations in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If I keep going, it's going to go up to the next memory level and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Next memory level and piston one, etc., etc., etc. Because there are large and complicated works that require this kind of flexibility. Other things about the organ, which you should be aware of, are what you see down here. There are two expression shoes. These open and close some shutters made of wood that are in the organ. There are two expression boxes on this particular organ. There's one in the swell. And there's one on the grate. Expression boxes on this instrument provide us the ability to control the volume of the organ in a way outside of just adding or subtracting stops. This instrument also has a crescendo pedal. And what the crescendo pedal allows us to do is to blindly add stops to the organ.
interest for you to see a couple of the other buttons on this organ that are fun. First, we have a signal button. This allows me to be in communication with somebody that's in the narthex of the church. This is particularly useful for weddings. Behind me is a choir screen. So I can't see directly down the aisle without some sort of assistance. This signal button allows somebody in the back to tell me that the bridesmaids are ready. So I could change to a, a new piece. And then finally, they can tell me that the bride is ready. And then I can tell them by turning it off that I've seen that. And then I can move into bringing the bride down the aisle. There's also one more fun button, which I think you would appreciate, and it's seen here. It's the tower bell. We have a Pettit and Fritchen bell from 1965, and I can control the outside tower bell from the organ. It's a little after 2 o'clock on a Wednesday, and the children are to get out of school at 3, but we'll uh, turn the bell on just for a second to make them think that they're supposed to be out. So here it is. And then of course, I can turn it off too. Two controls that we have not specifically spoken of are found here with the other swell stops. The first is the cymbal stand, or bell star. That lives up in the swell division of the organ. The second is the tremulant. If I pull that on, it shakes the wind. That tremulant controls the wind of the entire organ. So it is not division specific, it's a tremulant that affects everything. Another unique feature of this organ is found here with the flexible wind control. This control is here with the other pedal stops of the organ. When activated, it makes the wind system on this instrument more buoyant that is particularly important for music of the Baroque period and earlier times, or Romantic era music composed and conceived for instruments with that kind of winding system. When not activated, the wind system on this organ is steady. Next time, we will look at the mechanics of how what happens here translates into the organ. This is a mechanical action instrument. So there is direct linkages between the keys and the chest of the organ through something we call trackers. We will look at those together and try and demonstrate how what I do here translates into the instrument there. Thank you so much.